So when you think of Mitsubishi these days, you probably picture cars or old CRTs and VCRs that you have boxed up in your attic somewhere. What you probably don't picture is a Windows 95 tablet computer. But back in 1997, Mitsubishi released just that. This is the Amity VP. And thanks to a viewer named Alex who loaned me this thing, we're gonna be exploring it today and see what tablet computing was like over two decades ago. Hello everybody and welcome back to another video. So we've talked about Windows tablets on this channel before, even going as far back to Microsoft's WinPad project from 1992. But that was a specialized PDA-focused version of Windows that never came to fruition. The Amity VP here runs full-fledged Windows 95 with an extension layer of sorts called Pen Services. You could think of this like Windows 95 Tablet PC Edition, as it enables you to easily use a stylus to navigate around the OS. So of course, we've got one of those right here. And the screen contains a Wacom digitizer. You know, the same thing that's in those drawing tablets by Wacom. Now, this is certainly not the first device to do this. There were numerous offerings from other OEMs, and Mitsubishi's Amity line itself dates back to 1993, and those earlier models were pre-installed with a specialized version of Windows 3.1 called Windows for Pen Computing. But this one specifically has a 133 MHz AMD AM5 x86 CPU, 32 MB of RAM, and a 750 MB hard drive. All for the low, low price of... Well, I'm not entirely sure, to be honest. You know, it's kind of an expected thing with these more obscure devices that information available on them is just going to be more limited than a mainstream consumer machine. The Internet Archive does have a snapshot of Mitsubishi's website from back in the day, but there's no pricing info on it for the Amity VP. It instead directs you to Egghead.com, a computer retailer that was later bought out by Amazon. And I had no luck digging up pricing over there. But this snapshot does does show us that, not surprisingly, the Amity VP was geared towards professional users. And we can also see some of the other machines that Mitsubishi sold around this time, including the Amity CN, a mini notebook, and the Amity XP, an updated tablet model that would come a couple years down the road. Luckily, I was able to find pricing info on both of these. The CN sold for $2,000 and the XP $3,000. So we can probably assume that the VP here costs somewhere in between, but let's go ahead and take a brief look at the hardware. So in terms of size comparison, I've got a three and a half inch floppy diskette right here. So you can see that this thing is a little more compact than you might expect. Uh, it's certainly not PDA size compact. I mean, again, this is not a PDA. This runs full-fledged Windows 95. Uh, so you can do, you know, quote unquote, real work on it. In fact, there's even a PS2 port on the side here if you want to plug in a keyboard, like to write essays or business documents or whatever. Uh, you also have your stylus, which you're saw you've got DC in for power microphone and headphone jacks and on the other side here you've got uh, two PCM CIA card slots and a serial port one really convenient thing is it actually has two batteries in it that are hot swappable and they can be accessed by taking off this cover here so if you had multiple units and you wanted to swap the battery from one of them to another you could just literally take one of these batteries out while the system is running put another one in and uh, you're all good to go but I think my favorite feature aside from you know, the touchscreen is the uh, different configurations that you can use this device in. So you could just open up the lid like so and just have it kind of sitting behind the device. You could put it underneath the device and there is a little tab here on the back that it will uh, lock into. If you just pull that up, it just slides right into there. That way it's not going to be flapping anywhere. And then you can just set it on the table like that. There is also, if I um, undo this here, there's a little kickstand of sorts here that you can pull down. You can pull uh, this part out and it will lock into this little hole here. And then I can just bring it up like this and that way it's uh, kind of sitting off the table a little bit. But there's also this longer kickstand here that you can bring out. You can extend this arm all the way back until it clicks into place there. And then you just take the uh, lid and you open it up again. We'll bring this all the way around. And then it just kind of latches into that little uh, crevice there. 
And there you go. So you can prop this up. You could also uh, bring this arm back into there. It'll lock into place. And then you can, you know, have this up at a little bit of a different angle. So this would be the most ideal way to use this thing with a, with a keyboard. You know, if you wanted to like type out a Word document or, or something on this. But yeah, it is really nice. You've got just different ways to, you know, prop this up and uh, use it depending on what you prefer. But yeah, that's a little uh, brief look at the hardware and how everything is laid out. Now we're going to go ahead and actually power this thing on. We'll take a look at the operating system and how the pen interacts with it. And we'll also explore some of the rather unique software that's contained on this hard drive. All right, so I don't have Windows booted up yet because I wanted to show you the startup process uh, for this device. Uh, so we've just powered it on here now entering the BIOS you can actually do it will come up with a with a box here And yeah, here it is tap pen and box above to enter pen setup So here's the BIOS setup utility and you can navigate around in it by using the pen now This is not the first time I've seen this uh, we saw this on those motion computing uh, Windows XP tablet PC edition tablets that uh, that I explored a couple years back. Um, so, you know, this is uh, not too uncommon for these, uh, you know, touchscreen devices. Uh, but you can also just use the arrow keys, you know, if you prefer that, you can hit enter, you got all your, you know, numbers and everything over here for changing the date. In fact, let me, let's go back and uh, just see, yes, the date is correct. Okay, so we're just going to uh, exit out of here. All right, so here we are booted up into Windows 95. And speaking of those motion computing tablets, the screen on this thing essentially functions the exact same way. So to move the mouse pointer around, I just have to hover the pen tip over the screen. So I'm not touching the screen right now, and you can see it's moving the uh, mouse pointer. This is also how the Wacom drawing tablets function. You know, with this being a Wacom sensor, you would expect it to function function the same way. Uh, so yeah, um, it is moving around like that. And then when you tap, that's actually going to be the equivalent of a click. So I'm tapping on all these icons, uh, the system is clicking on them. So yeah, it's really intuitive, super easy to use. Now in terms of tablet oriented software, we do have a couple programs in the pen services folder. So we've got a handwriting trainer, keybinds, screen keyboard and writing palette. We also have the editing palette up over here, which contains a couple of special characters, you've got period, comma, quotation marks, you also got backspace. So kind of like for you know, editing documents, and things you might want to make some quick changes there uh, the handwriting trainer is to get you used to using handwriting recognition which yes this system also has this actually looks like an old windows 3.1 application in fact uh well 2.0 copyright 1995 so uh yeah, I, I just the, the way this is laid out kind of reminds me of Windows 3.1. We do have an on-screen keyboard you saw. Uh, if we open up the pen services folder again, uh, we've got that right here. We'll come back to the keybinds uh, in a minute. Uh, but yeah, so you can bring this up uh, at any time just to have it, you know, floating uh, on your desktop. But you can also get access to that whenever you bring up an application that has a text box. So here's Run, for example. So you see there's this little icon next to whatever I've typed in. If we tap on that, it'll bring up the on-screen keyboard. So we could just type out whatever we want or we could switch to handwriting recognition down here and just write uh, whatever we want out I also probably saw that keybinds application you might be wondering what's going on with that well these uh, keys over here towards the right are actually customizable you got a couple different presets here we can change this maybe to uh, reg one you can see it's set to 7894F1612 and 3 so basically 5 is now F1 the last application in there if I can actually tap on the start menu there, is the writing palette. Uh, so this is, uh, you know, for the handwriting recognition. We also just saw a version of this, more of a slimmed down version when we were in run. So this is where you can write out whatever you want. And uh, I think you hit check mark and it will, yeah, send text to whatever application that you're that you're in. So again, we saw similar stuff in Windows XP Tablet PC Edition. This is kind of the earlier versions of all this stuff. Oh, also one other important thing, the button here on the stylus, if you press that down and touch the screen, that's how you right click. So that's gonna be really important for opening up context menus and all of that. But the main thing I wanna show you on this tablet is some interesting uh, software we have on the C drive because there's actually a uh, prototype of sorts application called 
Casio Net Kitchen, which is something that I cannot find any information on. I mean, if you look up Casio Net Kitchen in quotation marks on Google, the only thing that comes up is a Reddit post uh, from the guy who sent this to me because he posted on Reddit trying to find out information about this. But from what I can tell, this appears to be a front end for some internet appliance related thing. You know, why don't I just show you? It'd probably be easier if I just go through this. Uh, so you've got three applications. Casio 3, Casio 4, and Casio Hand. They're all like these demo applications, right? Like they don't have any actual functionality. You can't enter any data into them. Uh, they're just sort of designed to show you how this uh, theoretical, you know, whatever this was going to be used on, uh, how it would have functioned. Yeah, so this is, a, you know, you've got like a calendar here, got some events, you've got a sidebar here with like various, you know, online retailers and well, just just, just websites, you've got like Bank of America down here. Um, and if we tap on like this one here, um, I don't think it entirely matters like where you tap. I think you're just kind of going through a slideshow of sorts. Uh, so it says over here, only five more days till your mother-in-law's anniversary. And watch, if I tap over here, it'll just advance to the next uh, screen, which is just clicking on shop now, I guess. So it says, check out these gift suggestions matched to Karen's profile. So what is Karen going to want? Uh, well, you've got, it looks like a Casio watch here, of course. But if we tap over here, it suggests this uh, pottery. So it says $49.95, okay. So shipping options, like we're, we're going to buy this thing now. So ship to your home. Uh, and here's the total and everything, order confirmation. And now we're back to the calendar. Uh, if we go again, now we get... Uh, MGM Grand, enjoy three days and two nights at the fabulous MGM Grand, only two thirty nine dollars per person. Holy cow, don't you wish it was still that much? And yeah, now we're back to the calendar. We advance again. We get a, a recipe for garlic and lemon roast chicken. So it's just kind of showing you, like, like, this definitely would have been in a kitchen, right? Like, you're getting, you know, recipes and stuff. Um, so, yeah, I don't entirely know how this software ended up on a Mitsubishi Amity VP tablet. Uh, but, you know, maybe this was like a, a piece of software that Casio was going to release. I don't know. Honestly, the hope is that somebody sees this video that might be able to shed some more light on this. Maybe someone who was working at Casio at the time or was working on whatever development team was creating this. Uh, so here it looks like we have a grocery list. Uh, it looks like uh, like an online order. Yeah, so Florida's Natural Lemonade, Thai Kitchen, Pure Coconut Milk. So you got like some items and the prices here. Oh, this is like the stuff you need for the recipe. But no, it says check out down here. Like this was my, uh, yeah, enter your five digit pin number. Yeah, so that was uh, like placing a, like an order at, I guess, Safeway. Um, here we've got Domino's Pizza, Ming's, and uh, Eric's Deli. Looks like we got some movie times here. Now, these files are dated 1999, which was when Star Wars Episode One was showing in theaters. So uh, you get a little synopsis of the movie here, the show time at whatever theater that is. And um, yeah, so you can look, look, yeah, it looks like buying tickets through Ticketmaster here. I'm guessing there's probably going to be examples of all of these. So like, let's see if there's Macy's or no, it's just, it just resets now. So now we're back to only five more days till your mother-in-law's anniversary. So um, yeah, it's kind of like an online shopping and ordering front end, which is just uh, really interesting. So uh, yeah, that's Casio 3. We also have uh, Casio 4 here. Uh, which is the exact, if I can actually tap on the thing here. So this one here is like the exact same interface, but the buttons appear to be mapped now. So like if I were to tap on Bank of America down here, it will bring up your Bank of America account information, you know, theoretically. We can go uh, back to menu. Let's see if Macy's works. I don't know if all of these work. Yeah, Macy's doesn't do anything. Ticketmaster will bring up the uh, show times. So these are all like the same screens, or maybe the Bank of America one wasn't in the last application. Uh, here's uh, Cuisine Net, which we just saw, uh, Home Chef, uh, this is the recipe thing, and Safeway, I'm guessing, is the, like, grocery ordering, yeah, so that's that. Um, and let's try to tap on, like, these events here, let's see, do these do anything? Doesn't look like it, so that whole, like, mother-in-law uh, birthday or whatever thing is... is uh, is gone. Options doesn't do anything. Menu will bring you back to the menu when you're, you know, in like another screen. And then you got next month and previous month down here, which also don't do anything. So yeah, that's this one. And then if we uh, get out of this, we also have Casio Hand, which is, it kind of looks like it's meant to be a, a store display demo of sorts, or maybe a tutorial, because it has, uh, you're going to see here, a hand just overlaid on top of the interface but it's interesting because you seem to have to tap on stuff for the hand to move around so like if you tap here 
it just moves the hand over there and taps on it. So it's like kind of redundant. I mean, I would think they would probably have this on just like a loop of just going through all these various, uh, you know, slides. Um, but, and you see, I think it is on a loop. Actually, this is probably the loop from the first uh, application from Casio 3. Because if you remember, we tapped on the screen, it brought up the only five days to your mother-in-law's anniversary, then it's going to hit shop now which it does that, and then it moves over here to the pottery thing, and then it taps on that. So yeah, it's just basically that, but just now with this like animated hand going around. Like I said earlier, Alex did make a post on the Vintage Computing subreddit, uh, just kind of asking about this thing and seeing if anybody knew what NetKitchen was. But most people there were just talking about the device itself, you know, with it being a Vintage Computing subreddit. So they were talking just about the Amity VP in general. One person said it's kind of the most plausible explanation is that it was probably a front end for some sort of internet appliance, probably meant for use in a kitchen. Somebody else thought it might have something to do with NetKitchen netkitchen.com which is a website that's still around today i looked into that there is a snapshot on the way back machine from 1999 the year these files are dated but it appears to be the website for a web design consulting group that has nothing to do with casio so we can probably write that one off as just a coincidence so yeah that's something i thought would be worth sharing uh because i mean i hadn't seen it anywhere before and uh yeah hopefully somebody could shed some light on it a couple other things I want to demo before this video is over. I want to talk about uh, the functionality in the BIOS that actually allows you to hibernate the system. Uh, so what you do is just hold down the power button here for a few seconds, and it will bring this up. So here it is, Phoenix Miser Redwood, save to disk in progress. So what it does is it just saves the current system state, and then it powers off the system, and then when you power it back on, it will just resume uh, from that state. So this is basically hibernation before it was fully implemented into Windows. So there it is powered off. Uh, if I were to unplug the uh, AC adapter here, you'll see those lights will go off. Uh, we'll just plug it back in and we'll power it back on and then when it starts up here it will restore from disk so here we are we're right i mean if i had some windows open or whatever you'll know, be in the exact system state we were uh when we you know put it into hibernation oh and if you were wondering all this additional software like photoshop and microsoft office was installed by alex that was not something that came from mitsubishi he mentions that in his uh, letter here that he included in the package when he sent this thing to me and um alex i just want to thank you very very much once again for um, giving me the opportunity to showcase this on the channel. It's a really awesome device and definitely that that Casio Net Kitchen stuff is uh, super cool, very fascinating, and hopefully uh, this video will, uh, you know, lead to some more information being revealed about it. But that's pretty much all I have to say about this thing. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, be sure to give it a thumbs up, get subscribed, all that good stuff. And if you really enjoyed this video and want to get early access to my future content, I do have a Patreon you could check out, or you could become a channel member. But either way, I just want to thank you all so much for watching, and I will see you in the next video.